Happy Easter. He is risen. Welcome to the Little Home Church by the Wayside on this sunny Easter morning. We extend our love to those watching online from near and far during the week. And in case you miss them here in the service or online, Samantha recorded both our Monday Thursday service and Good Friday service so you can watch those as well. We're an open and affirming church. Folks from all walks of life, regardless of sexuality, race, or any other perceived differences can always find a place here at our table. You're important to us. If you're visiting today for the first time, please fill out a visitor's card. If you're watching online, please send us an email as well. I want to thank Anne for being pulpit associate. Our ushers are Brian and Carol. Thanks to everybody who did flowers today, and just a reminder to pick those up after the church service today and take them with you. Emily Miller is preparing a wonderful fellowship time for us. We will have child care today. It won't be Sunday school, but there will be a time if um, boys and girls would like to um, leave the service after the children's sermon. You can go with Mrs. Fergurski <clears throat> um, over to my office, and um, uh, she'll be there along with Helena today. Catherine and Heather are on Easter basket duty after church for our Easter egg hunt as well. Uh, going through some announcements just briefly today. Monday, the, uh, the church office is closed. Tuesday night is a genealogy meeting at 7 o'clock on Zoom. Wednesday is our Bible study at 10 in the morning, choir practice in the evening. Thursday is the Exodus fundraising dinner. Please see Anne Bouchard. And then next Saturday at 10 o'clock in the sanctuary will be um, a celebration of life for Janice Christensen. Uh, we had a graveside burial yesterday, and um, we will celebrate her life next Saturday morning at 10 o'clock here in the sanctuary. That evening, Congregational Life Dinners will be held in folks' homes. And then just to call your attention to a few other dates, and if you'll look in the uh, bulletin for these later. We have uh, the opportunity to celebrate Earth Day by doing some tree planting. Our Grateful Gifts event is coming up on May 19th. And there's also a sign-up sheet for our Scout Troop, Scout Troop 99 of Wayne, to sign up for sodas and cookies uh, to furnish for their April 29th spaghetti dinner. I encourage everyone now to bring your full attention to this worship service. Close your eyes. Take a few deep breaths, offer thanks for the day, 
for being here, for those who went before us in faith, and for the blessings that will come today to us. Hear these words by Ted Loder, the final word. God doesn't control everything. We're free to make choices, and so to make terrible mistakes. But the key is in the resurrection or resurrections. History suggests there's a, res a resurrection to the Inquisition, if only because the final word isn't the Inquisition. The final word isn't Hiroshima. The final word isn't the Holocaust. The final word isn't Pearl Harbor or September 11th or the many wars of our history. Yes, all those are real, painful, terrible, and evil. But none of the bad stuff, or for that matter, none of the good stuff, is the end of God's world and work in it. It's the witness of the gospel that nothing, nothing can separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. That's what matters. That's as much of a creed as I need. How about you? Amen. Good morning. Please stand if you're able and join me in the call to worship. Give thanks to our good God, whose unfailing love lasts forever. Give thanks to our risen God, whose unfailing love lives forever. We gather together in the dawn of a new day. We look toward the tomb to seek the word made flesh. The stone has been rolled away. The tomb is empty. Hallelujah. We find God alive in the searching, in the garden, in our hope-filled spaces. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Christ, Christ lives, lives and finds Christ us with unfailing love.
be seated. May I ask you to join me in the prayer of invocation. Resurrected God, you were the God of new beginnings, of new dawns and new mercies. Enter into our presence again. When we move toward the tomb, remind us that you come with life. When we despair at the world unfolding around us, assure us of your redemptive power. When we long for your voice, we speak our hope, encouragement, and peace. May we reflect your image as resurrection people in covenant with you. Amen. The Prayer of Transformation and New Life. Amazing God, we know there is nothing you cannot overcome. We confess to our profound need of your love, strength, and mercy. Too often, we come toward the tomb resigned to the status quo. We anticipate the worst even when you are the provider of every good and perfect thing. We allow despair over the condition of our world overwhelm us when we call to follow you. Fortify us to live abundantly in your kingdom on earth. Transform us and breathe new life into us. Hear these words of grace. The one who transformed death can and will certainly transform our lives. Jesus welcomes us on the journey to new life. No matter how many times our steps stray, we hide from hard things or we betray the good news, God's grace meets us with an unfailing love to guide us on the path of a life abundant and everlasting. Receive the resurrection power of the one who was and is and is to come.
May the peace of Christ be with you. We encourage you to place your hands over your heart and greet those around you. If I can have the boys and girls come on up and just be careful as you walk past. We're going to have you guys stand up here today. All right, so just be careful as you walk past the brass players. Okie doke. How is everybody today? Good, 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 good. Did you know that you guys, bless you, did you guys know that you made the bulletin today? Yep. Boys and girls today made the bulletin at the very beginning of the bulletin in the quote. One more. Okay, here we go. All right. Hi, Genevieve. So this is what the quote said. Easter egg hunts are proof that children can find things when they really want to. Have you ever had times when you've just like, dependent on your mom or your dad or somebody to just find things for you instead of looking for it for yourself? Yeah, maybe, maybe. But it's good to try to do things for ourselves. Well, what is today? It's Easter. So what are some of the symbols? What are some of the symbols that you guys think of when you think of Easter? Pierce. The cross. The cross. And um, Helena pointed to this. This was actually a cross made out of a palm that Pierce's daddy made for me last week. And if anybody wants one of those, see Pierce's daddy. <laughs> um, so the cross is one. What's another? Eggs. Absolutely. Eggs. What else? Clara. Adorably cute bunnies. Look at behind us. Lilies and spring flowers make us think of that. And I've got one more. What is this? A butterfly. Do you see the butterfly? Yeah. And um, so why do you think a butterfly would be a symbol of Easter? Pierce. A butterfly is kind of a butterfly. So flowers are a sign of Easter spring, yes? Clara? It represents new life. I think that's a wonderful thing. If it has a lot of colors, that's a great thing about Easter. It includes everybody, all kinds of colors. That includes everybody, I think. What are the stages of a butterfly? Does anybody know? How do they start? Caterpillar, Caterpillar and then? They eat a lot of leaves. They grow a cocoon or a chrysalis, depending on what kind of butterfly it is. Absolutely. That kind of looks like they're dead, you know, when they're in their, their chrysalis or cocoon. And then finally, we get these beautiful butterflies and colors. Now, do you know what? When you guys do the Easter egg hunt today, I have a whole bunch of these butterflies back there that you will be able to collect when you find the eggs. That's part of the prizes. And my understanding is from Amazon that they glow in the dark. <laughs> So, when things change, sometimes we use the word transform. And you guys know about transformers, maybe, too. So, Jesus transformed. We know the story of Easter, that um, Jesus uh, walked on the earth and taught us lessons and taught us how to live and helped a lot of people. And then came this, this time in his life where he was crucified on the cross, but Easter is the day that he resurrected. And that's a really important lesson. And when we come to church, we also transform because we tell that story. 
And that story isn't just about Jesus transforming. It's about all of us transforming. Sometimes we can transform simply from being in a bad mood to being in a better mood. Sometimes we can transform into all sorts of wonderful, beautiful things like butterflies as we grow and as we get older and grow into our lives. So I want you to just remember today and when you see butterflies, I want you to think about how things are always changing, that love changes us, and love is always changing us as we grow into things that become so beautiful. Whether we started as a little fuzzy caterpillar or a sleepy cocoon, we can always wind up being a beautiful butterfly. All right? Shall we say the Lord's Prayer? And then you guys... If you want to go back, you, you're going to go to my office today. If you want to go to, um, if, you, if you want to do, it won't be Sunday school, but, but you'll have things to do back there until church is done. Or if you want to stay in church today, you can stay in church. Okay? All right, let's say the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Okay, you guys, off you go. There we go. We are today going to do um, our joys and concerns per se, but I will share just a few things that did um, come to my attention this week. First of all, um, Kathy Conley mentioned to us this week, there was a longtime resident of Wayne, uh, is it David Sweeney? David Sweeney passed away. Um, we have information about him in the church office, or if you go to the post office, um, we posted his obituary and a picture of him. And then also a longtime member of our church, um, Wayne Hendrickson, Laurel uh, phoned in to say that Wayne had a stroke. So we want to keep Wayne in our prayers as well. There are many other joys and concerns, I'm sure, this morning, and there'll be a time in the prayer today for you to remember all of those folks that you want to remember today. Please pray with me. Good and gracious God, in the joy and hope of this Easter morning, we sing Alleluia with the fullness of hearts. Christ is risen. Love is stronger than death. Alleluia. But in the joy and hope of this Easter morning, in the midst of our singing and praising, we know there are those who are bewildered and sad. And we pray for those who have no hope, for those who suffer from depression, loneliness, and fear. We pray for those places and peoples in our world where death and domination rule, where imperial powers ignore the poor where war never ends, where children are hungry, where parents grieve because they can't provide enough for their, ten for their children, where accidents happen and death abounds senselessly. We pray for those held hostage to addiction, chronic illness that debilitates body, mind, and soul. This morning, O oh God, we pause in a moment of silence to lift up those who we hold in our hearts today.
In the joy and hope of this Easter morning, we realize the depth and breadth of what it means to be your Easter people. We are the lucky ones here today who can and must put feet to our prayers, for we have just prayed for others in need. We are the lucky ones who are called to go into the places in our lives and world to work for justice and life for all in your creation. It is up to us to bear witness to the promise of resurrection, to hold those in despair, and believe for them that love is stronger than death. In the joy and hope of this Easter morning, O oh God, give us the courage to bear your living love in every corner of our lives, so that your peaceable realm will be so, here on earth as it is in heaven. God of our hearts, thank you for living and loving in us and through us. May all that we do flow from our deep connection with you and all beings. Help us to continually become a community that vulnerably shares each other's burdens. And we pray all of this knowing you are hearing us better than we are speaking. We offer these prayers in all the holy names of God. Amen. Our first scripture reading this morning is from Colossians, chapter, uh, the third chapter, verses 1 through 4. So if you have been raised with Christ, seek the things that are above where Christ is, seated at the right hand of God. Set your mind on things that are above, not on things that are on earth, for you have died, and your life is hidden with Christ in God. When Christ, who is your life, is revealed, then you, will al you also will be revealed with him in glory. Our second reading is from the Gospel of Matthew, the 28th chapter, verses 1 through 10. After the Sabbath, as the first day of the week was dawning, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to the tomb to see the tomb. And suddenly there was a great earthquake. For an angel of the Lord, descending from heaven, came and rolled back the stone and sat on it. His appearance was like lightning and his clothing white as snow. For fear of him, the guards shook and became like dead men. But the angel said to the women, Do not be afraid. I know that you are looking for Jesus, who was crucified. He is not here, for he has been raised, as he said. Come, see the place where he lay. Then go quickly and tell his disciples, He has been raised from the dead, and indeed, he is going ahead of you to Galilee. There you will see him. This is my message for you. So they left the tomb quickly with fear and great joy and ran to tell his disciples. Suddenly, Jesus met with them and said, Greetings. And they came to him took hold of his feet and worshiped him. And then Jesus said to them, do not be afraid. Go and tell my brothers to go to Galilee. There they will see me. For the word in scripture, for the word among us, for the word within us. Thanks be to God. Easter Sunday is often called the Feast of Hope, particularly when communion is celebrated. We are not observing communion this morning as we have over the past six Sundays in Lent. We had a Lenten series called A History of Communion. 
Nevertheless, today is a day of hope for all of us. Some of what I'm going to say today comes from a writing by Father Richard Rohr. He's someone I follow every day um, on his website, uh, and it's called Contemplatives in Action. The article that I'm referring to today is a few years old, but it came back to my memory as I was preparing for today's Easter service. The Brazilian writer and journalist Fernando Sabino wrote, in the end, everything will be all right. If it's not all right, it's not the end. I'll say it again. In the end, everything will be all right. If it's not all right, it's not the end. And isn't that what today is all about? Everything will be okay in the end. Is the primary message of Easter just about Jesus' body? I don't think so. Although we've been trained to limit it to this one-time miracle, we've been educated to expect a lone risen Jesus saying, I rose from the dead, look at me. I'm afraid that's why many people and even Christians don't really seem to get too excited about Easter sometimes. If the message doesn't somehow include us, humans don't tend to be that interested in theology and the church. If the message doesn't relate to us, if we don't identify with it, we just aren't that interested. Bette Midler said it best in the 1988 movie Beaches. She played a neurotic, self-absorbed singer-entertainer named Cece Bloom. And she was about to become the mother to her best friend who was dying. And there's a wonderful line in that movie that sums it all up about being included. Cece Bloom says this in a conversation with someone. But enough about me. Let's talk about you. What do you think about me? <laughs> and so it goes. So what about us? What about us in this whole story of Jesus? And more specifically, what about us today in this story of Easter and resurrection? Roar had a wonderful quote. Every message about Jesus is a message about all of us, about humanity. Every message of Jesus is about us. The Western church that most of us were raised in emphasized the individual resurrection of Jesus. It was a miracle that, to the best of my knowledge, none of us here could either prove nor have experienced but that we just dare to boldly believe through faith. And there's nothing wrong with that. Rohr goes on to teach a history lesson after making such a bold statement. There's a great secret, at least for Western Christians, both Catholic and Protestant alike, hidden in the other half of the universal church. What's the other half? The Eastern Orthodox Church. And they will celebrate Easter next week in places like Syria, Turkey, Greece, Egypt. Easter is not usually painted with a solitary Jesus rising from the dead. He's always surrounded by crowds of people, both haloed and unhaloed. See the artwork on the cover of this bulletin. In fact, Traditional icons, he's pulling people out of Hades. Now, Hades is not the same as hell, although we put the two words together and so we grew up reciting in the creed that Jesus descended into hell. Instead, Hades is simply the place of the dead. There's no punishment or judgment involved. It's just where a soul waits for God. That's what the, the Eastern Orthodox Church teaches. 
we neglected that interpretation. Now, we have an expert in our midst on this subject, Reverend John Hutchinson, who, as I understand it, wrote a paper on this very topic once. So if you really want to go into this further, talk to him. And that's called a little dance around. Roar concludes, so the Eastern Church was probably much more closer to the truth, that the resurrection is a message about humanity. It's a message about history. It's a corporate message, and it includes you and me, and this is the hard one to say, and everybody else. If that isn't true, it's no wonder that we've basically lost interest. Today is the Feast of Hope, the Feast of Direction, the Feast of Purpose, the Feast of Meaning, and the Feast of Community. We are all in this together, and that can't be said enough. And that's why at Little Home Church by the Wayside, I think we do what we do. Our prayers do have feet attached to them. I was just asked to write a statement for our Grateful Gifts um, Committee about our upcoming event on May 19th. I phoned Susie, our treasurer. She sent me a list of everything that we've done since the last Grateful Gifts to help me in my writing. Kathleen had to make a bigger invitation because so much was done. So much was given from this church, from this gathered community. The cynicism and negativity that our country and many countries have descended into shows a clear example of what happens when people don't have hope. If it's all hopeless, we lose hope as individuals as well. Easter is the declaration of common hope, a hope that is there for all of us. When we sing the Easter hymns that Christ destroyed death, that means the death of all of us. It's not just about Jesus. It's to humanity that God promises. Life is not ended. It merely changes. That's a phrase we use in funeral liturgy. It's a lesson we teach our children with butterflies and transformation. Life changes as we grow in relationship with each other, with ourselves, as we strive to be authentic and true to ourselves, and with God. That relationship, whatever that means to you. Life is not ended. It merely changes. That's what happened in the story of Jesus, and that's what will happen in us as a church, and that's what will happen in you. In the end, everything will be all right. History is set on an inherently positive and hopeful tangent. In the end, everything will be all right. And if it's not all right, it's not the end. Amen. This is the time in our worship service where we actively and intentionally take part in the support of the ministry of Christ. If you are a member of Little Home Church, we encourage you to continue your pledges and financial support. And if you're visiting with us today, we welcome your gifts as well. You may donate by cash, check, Venmo, or PayPal. The QR codes for Venmo and PayPal are listed in the bulletin um, or in the little insert, electronic insert that's in the pews. For those of you who may be watching this service on YouTube later in the week, this information will be revealed uh, at the close of the service on the screen. Please join me in the offertory prayer. Giving God, 
receive this portion of the gifts you have given to us. May our time, treasure, and talent be magnified and multiplied for your glory. Amen. Oh, oh, oh. 
You may be seated. For our Easter benediction, I took some words from a poem of Jan Richardson and reworked them just a bit for us this morning. Who would have ever imagined that something like an empty tomb could fill us to overflowing? Now let us carry the knowledge of the empty tomb like an empty treasure. Be patient and don't be surprised. The emptiness will bear forth a new world that you might need some time to ponder. But nevertheless, you stand on the edge. So why linger here? You have seen and so you are already blessed. You have been seen and now you are the blessing. There is no other word you need. There is simply to go and tell. There is simply to begin. May the God in you, the divine image to which you are made, see the God in me and all of the wonderful saints and souls that will cross our paths in the days that lie ahead. Amen. <laughs>